So hello all and welcome to this and this is going to be kind of two videos in one um, mainly because I know most people will watch this video and so the thing I want to really talk about not Survivor Series um, people will probably hopefully um, watch or listen to but maybe not who knows I'll stick it at the end the stuff I really want to talk, it to, talk about I didn't want to review Survivor Series just never got around to it uh, between work um, and other stuff going on I, I just wasn't able to you know, really get anything done, so, <coughs> there was all of that, I did watch it, um, watched it a while ago, um, I thought it was good, I wouldn't call it great, um, the crowd definitely helped make the pay-per-view a lot better, and I thought The Rock looked really good, um, but we'll get to the main event here in a minute, I'll, run, I'll just run down the matches, I might need star ratings or anything, I'm just gonna run down and tell you kind of what I thought, but Dolph, Dolph Ziggler and John Morrison was, was a good opener, um, Fast paced, you know, what an opener was. Beth Phoenix, E. Torres, who really cares? Uh, I thought the Survivor Series match itself was, was good. Um, you know, I, it always kind of amazes me with these matches because here's a match that could easily, <coughs> excuse me, easily, you know, waste an hour of the pay per view. And I think people would buy it. I think people would like it. Um, especially when you're only going to do one of these matches, you know, during, you know, on a pay-per-view, I, I, I don't understand why you just don't let the match kind of go out. You know, you, you had guys in here that could work. You had guys in here who, you know, you could stretch the match out a little bit. Um, you had enough star power in this match, I think, to do that. And they just don't do it. They haven't done it in a long time. But I really think minimum one of these matches should be is 40 minutes um, with entrances. But, you know, that's that's probably, you know... Something WWE would never do. Maybe even up to an hour, I would say. Um, if you stretched it out, had a good, you know, tag team, you know, first elimination didn't happen for, you know, maybe 15 minutes. Something like that where you kept the people in it. Um, it was a good fast-paced match and uh, something a little different. And you could build guys up. I mean, this is a match where I really think you could build guys up too. And we just didn't see that. Um, I did like the match. I, I, I thought that um, Barrett came out looking pretty good in the match, so that was good. Uh, Big Show and Henry, um, I thought it was going along okay until the end. Um, it was pretty evident they're going to try to, you know, do a slow Mark Henry face build. Mm, I think Mark Henry's better as a heel, but I guess we'll see. Uh, CM Punk versus Alberto Del Rio, I thought was a good championship match. I wouldn't call it a great match, but I, I thought it was good. And, um, yeah, then we had uh, John Cena and The Rock versus The Miz and R-Truth. I thought The Rock looked pretty good. Um, of course, I guess because The Rock has been out for so long, but also because you know, people forget The Rock isn't necessarily the best seller in the world. Um, you know, not that John, not that, you know, he's probably still better than John Cena, but he hadn't done it in so long that, you know, John Cena basically had to do the Ricky Morton job and that just didn't come off well and, and, you know, um, it was what it was. I really think that, you know, I understand why they ended it the way they did, but I really think that it would have been better if, you know, The Miz, uh, in particular, had, had particularly, if you're thinking long term, which the WWE never does, I think if he would have gotten the pin, I think it would have been a much better, you know, if John Cena or The Rock would have screwed one of, the, one of each other, and then The Miz, you know, doing that, I think that would have come off better, but that's not what we got. Uh, I thought the end was kind of anticlimactic, to be honest, but Anyways, um, the crowd pretty much made this pay-per-view. Um, I wouldn't say it's it, it's not you know make it as much as like one night stand um, two per se, but the crowd was really good. Um, but it was you know the show was just kind of what it was. So, anyways, um, let's get on to what I really want to talk about because the WWE doesn't care enough about to actually build up their pay-per-views. I really don't care enough, you know to review them most of the time. So, uh, for those of you not aware, and, and I'm sure some of you probably heard of it, uh, Chikara is putting on a kind of a tribute show, I guess you could say, um, called Joshi Mania, which is, um, they're bringing over a bunch of Japanese women wrestling, wrestlers, um, some of which are legends, um, particularly uh, Toyota and Asia Kong, which are bringing over, which is a pretty big deal. And uh, this weekend, by the time most of you see this, the, uh, which will be on Friday, um, the first show is Friday night, and um, it will be uh, it will be in Philly, 
And so hopefully maybe one or two people that see this video may, you know, actually want to go see this. Um, if you haven't heard of it, I would recommend going. It'll be at the old ECW arena. It'll be at the asylum. And, um, yeah, um, you know, I, this is, it's kind of weird because, you know, I love Ring of Honor a lot, but, you know, Ring of Honor very seldom ever puts on shows and I'm like, oh, I have to go see those shows. And I wish I could fly and go see those shows. Meanwhile, Chikara, you know, this would be the second time this year they've done this between, uh, between this, this and King of Trios. Um, you know, they're going to do kind of a fan meet and greet with AJ Kong and Mommy Toyota, which that right there to me is worth going and worth the price of admission all by itself. Um, that is, uh, that to me is, is, is a big, big, big deal. And, uh, yeah, uh, anyways, anyways, um, to get on with the shows, uh, the Friday show, which I'm sure no one watching this is probably go see, but I hope, I hope at least one or two people go see it. I know, um, uh, Double Miz, I know she made a video about this, uh, talking about the fact that she's going to the Manhattan show. I know, uh, I think, I think LV's going to the Sunday show, no, I think he's going, I think he's going to... The Saturday show, maybe. I can't remember. I know he's going to one of the shows, too. And um, I'm sure I would be shocked if uh, if uh, Gilbert, um, Gilbert Blaze didn't wind up at the Manhattan show. But, I mean, things can change. But pretty much that's that's your, your people that really talk women's wrestling. And, you know, Double Men is really the only one that's made a video of it. That's kind of sad. And I wanted to make videos of this as well, but I was more worried about making videos for High Noon than this. I did, if you went to my page, you probably saw a couple of these favorited. You saw a couple of me featuring some of the videos for this. And I'll feature a bunch of the videos um, hyping this up from Chikara in the description box. But, um, <clears throat> again, um, on Friday, you're going to get in the main event. And the main event should just sell this on you. It will be Sarah Del Rey versus AJ Kong, which should be, I, ho I would hope, a, at least a very good match. Um, so, there you go. Um, and then the second night is in Everett, Massachusetts, which I have no idea what that is. I imagine it's probably somewhere. I don't know. Um, and that's going to be Hamada, used to be from TNA, taking on Asia Kong, which again, should be pretty fucking awesome. Not going to lie. And um, night three, which is, it takes place in Manhattan, um, will be uh, Sir Del Rey taking on Hamada. And then in a tag team, six six women tag match, um, Miami Toyota and Asia Kong will be kind of on opposite teams. So at some point during that match, Asia Kong and Miami Toyota will be in the ring together, um, probably setting in the middle of the ring and forming the crap out of each other. And it will be awesome. And yeah, won't get won't get to see it until uh, Smart Mark brings out the uh, DVD. So there we go. And I buy it. So, there we go. Um, but those are kind of, you know, the matches. This is very much a show I wish I could go to. That's why I wanted to talk about it, for those of you not aware of it. And, again, this is like, you know, 11th hour, me talking about this. And uh, I just hope I would just hope that some of you might check it out, might want to go at the last minute if you have nothing better to do. Um, they are having a fan expo thing where I guess they're, they're going to show the meet and greets at the uh, door. So um, I'll have all the this. I'll have everything in the description for everyone to check it out. But definitely, definitely, I would say if you have the time and um, you want to see some good women's wrestling and see what good women's wrestling is, this is a show to check out. If you can't go to the shows. Definitely, I would, I would, I would say, I would imagine these are probably going to be pretty good, and you might want to check them out when. Uh, they come out on DVD, which I would be shocked if they didn't come out quite, quite, uh, very quickly, um, to be honest. But anyways, with that, I'm out. Have a good one. Go to these shows if you can. I'm telling you, they're going to be really good. And uh, that, I'm out. Later.